Hola, Ace, ¿cómo estás? Estoy aquí en Medellín. Today I'm going to try to talk to you about a topic that people in Medellín and myself we don't like to talk about because it's disgusting. It's about the narcoterrorists and about the mafia people and about the Cali cartel, the Medellín cartel and Pablo Escobar. A lot of people come to the to the city and they're going to go they want to visit or try to do a tour to visit those places where Pablo lives, where he was killed, etc., etc. For us, as paisas, we don't like to talk about, we hate to talk about, and today, finally, it's going to happen something nice. I'm going to tell you about that. Like, uh, they stay in the poblado and go to the tour scene. Uh, like, it's, it's something that we hate. That it, because it's something that uh, foreign people come. They can't understand that there's thinking more. about. Uh, we can We want to learn about uh, Pablo Escobar and something. Oh no no no! no. I don't, I'm not we that type of guy. That. We hate that. I'm not that type of guy. No. So, so they come to learn about him and just go to the poblado and meet beautiful girls and, and we are not like that. Uh, you need to watch how you talking to certain yes, people. Yes, because you, you start to talk about that and we are going to block you. <laughs> yes, uh, it's, it's something we hate. Uh -huh. So uh. if you start like, oh, we want to learn about Paul Square, we want to know about drugs, we're like, what the are you talking about? The real streets of Colombia. I couldn't figure a better place to do it than film it here in Medellin, Colombia. When you type in Real Streets of Colombia online, all you see is filth enticing foreigners to come to a country for the wrong reason. That's why I'm creating this video, to show you the real, authentic lifestyle that is Colombia. Let's begin on the streets. Now, hopefully I can change your mind. All right, guys, so this is one of the programs they actually have in Colombia. It's to um, promote physical fitness. It's called Ciclovia. It's mainly for the bike riders right here. However, people use it to run, and so each city runs, the, do, does things differently. So for example, this is Medellin, right? So they block the street here. They do the same thing in Bogota, in major cities. Barranquilla also has a program. Every Sunday, people go outside with their family and work out. This is something that people are proud about, they love, they can't wait to do, they come out with their families. It's one of the things that people really miss out about coming to Colombia. It's a, it's a, it shows you a sense of family. Uh, look, they even have music out here, guys. Uh, it's, it's something special, guys, um, trust me. It's uh, probably like 10,000, 10, I don't know, what you think? Like when I first came here to Medellin, and you've seen it in my old videos, yeah. this was like a surprise to me. And I felt like I was left out every Sunday, I didn't do this. <laughs> you know, it's like, yo, did you go out you, or you missed out? And I yeah. love to look at the dogs, man. It's like dog day. Every, every breed is out here. Every breed. This is like where you see all the dogs and everything. This is one of the cool things about coming to the place like this. We're in Poblado area, but there's also several areas all over the city that's also doing this. And I can say this for other cities as well. They'll have all these programs. But I think like this one is just their longest stretch of running area. This is their uh, local uh, farmer's market here. This is where you can get some fresh produce. And they got some coffee here. And uh, chili powder. More? Uh, ch chili powder. This is something that you made here. Spicy. In, um, Very spicy. spicy. Let me ask you a, que a question. Todo es una compañía hecho en eh, Medellín. Diferentes emprendimientos, diferentes empresas. Okay, different um, businesses. Different um, businesses from Medellín, and they come here to sell their products here. So for him, he's making chili pepper. ¿Dónde salió ese chili pepper? Aquí en Antioquia. En Antioquia, San Luis, Antioquia. San Luis, Antioquia. Un municipio a dos horas y media. Okay, so it's a town two hours away, and they came here to sell some chili pepper. ¿Cuánto es el chili pepper? 
15 mil. 15 mil? Sí, para las sopas, para las carnes, so, puro ají. Ok, ese, ¿qué es Diferente, diferente. Este es amazónico. Amazónico. Ají charapita, es de chile. Ok, so they got different types of chili uh -huh. over here. Ok, that's cool. Uh -huh. All right. El pajarito es otro nombre. Sí. Chiquitico, es un ají pequeño. Ok. Habanero, es más. Oh, picante, mire habanero. este. Yo conozco este. Ajá, uh -huh. ok. That's nice, that's uh -huh. nice. Ok. A la y la ¿Lo gente hacen, haciendo ese cada domingo? Cada domingo, todos los domingos eh, aquí en el poblado. Ok. Nos esperamos para que vengan. Ese, ese es el mejor lugar por el ciclovía. Ciclovía, el mercado, legumbres, hay más cosas. Emprendedores. Ok. So this is the best place. Gotcha. Okay, okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Hecho en Medellín. Okay. Like I said, I like to come here because I like to see the dogs here. I've noticed that in Medellín, they are really in competition to see who is going to have the most exotic big dog. It needs to be big and fat. Okay. So we got some arepa here, guys. Okay. We have some... Um, Soup. Hola, ¿cómo estás? ¿Cómo estás? Okay, she, this is like coconut soup right here. And then she, uh, passion fruit. Oh, everything's in English. There you go, guys. Really good. ¿Cómo estás? Okay. How are you? Okay. So, uh, you shopping for um, some nice plants? Yes. Is that strawberry? Well, it's the castanillo, no? Ooh. This is thyme. Uh -huh. Okay, that's thyme right here. Are you a cook? Well, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> you came here to um, buy some food to cook some food, right? Yes, we I'm, always come here. This is what you like to do every Sunday? Every Sunday we come here to buy from the people directly so we can cook amazing dishes. And then you actually helping the, uh, them out? Yes, this is my dad and we're buying all these plants because we also have a garden and we like to grow plants. Wait, wait, wait a minute, you're an interesting old, um, woman. Okay, so you like to grow plants. You like to eat organic? Are you vegetarian? I'm a vegetarian since I was born. I knew it! <laughs> and so this is really good. This is yummy to you. Great. This is the best place for me ever. Who showed you how to become a vegetarian? Your, your father? My father and oh. my mother. They're both vegetarian. The, you guys are a, a, a paisa? Yes. Yeah, well, they, I, I was all my family is from Medellin, but I've lived in Bogota all my life, so I have less access. Uh, Rola. <laughs> okay, that's okay. So now you're back here in Medellin and how do you like it so far? I love it. I'm coming to live here now because of the pandemic. I'm gonna spend some time here. I was born here. All my family, both sides, lives here. And then I went to live to Bogota with my mom since I was very young. Mm -hmm. I grew up there, went to school, went to university. But all my family lives here, including my dad. So now I'm coming to live here with my family. That's what? like the plan. One question, all right? A lot of people are worried about coming to Colombia. They still think crazy things. What could you tell people about Medellin right now, coming to Medellin? I think, I mean, Colombia has a history, a difficult history, but I think we've been managing to change it. I think we're going through a very nice time. I think it's a good time to visit. Um, I mean, for me, Medellin is one of the best cities in the world. You have some of the most amazing people. Colombia, you can uh, come and visit the Andes, the Ocean Pacific, the, the Atlantic, the Ocean, the uh, Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean, uh, Amazon. So it's like an amazing spot. Like you shouldn't miss it. Obviously, it's a bit. Um, you have to be careful. You have to walk on the street and be careful. But it's the same as walking in New York in some of the toughest places. That's like my opinion. But thank you. Okay, <laughs> nice to meet you. Okay, all right. Have fun. This is family time for a lot of people. People love to do this. This is something they, oh, it's Sunday. You already know, get ready, just get dressed and come out. Some of them are gonna go work out and some of them are going to go shopping. <laughs> awesome. Every Sunday, they close this street so people can ride bikes and walk and the best place in which we can play in the streets. To perform in the street, you love it. Yeah. Yeah. To just have people walking, it's good energy. You see people are working out and hearing some good music. What type of music were you playing? It was like uh, a... It's a... It's a folk of all the world. Uh, yeah. uh, Celtic music, uh, some uh, Arabic music, uh, Colombian music, Latin American music. I actually felt all of that in what, what you were playing. Is that original music? Uh, what, traditional music. What traditional is music. Tra traditional music? Uh, what What is the name of your band? Balad. 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 U P uh, A L 
A R R. R. And you guys are from Medellin? Yes. Yeah. You, yeah. Mean, you mean security? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no. Medellin right now is light safe. Is, yes. It right depends. Now. It all depends in where you go in Medellin. You know, like there is places like you shouldn't go, but. Right here, for example, in El Poblado and Envigado, they, it is like safe for strangers. And I love this. This I feel like I'm missing out on um, just just the energy and working out. You guys, so you guys have a traditional sound, right? Is that the Medellin sound? No. What is the Medellin sound? Sound from Medellin? Music from uh, Medellin? Huasca. <laughs> Huasca? Huasca. <laughs> is a. No, no, no. No. Me, no. No, traditional no. music in Medellin, bambucos, pasillos. Ah. Eh, the thing is, like, there is no, like, too much sense of pertinence with the music here, you know? So, people in Medellin is a mix of many cult cultures. So, you see people, like, from all parts from Colombia and from the countryside. So, people yes. mostly. The music that here's here is like mostly vallenato, porros, okay. cumbias, mm -hmm. reggaeton. Okay. It is one of the cities which is like top reggaeton producers. Carol G from Medellin, right? Carol yeah. G is for uh, is that Maluma? Yeah. Yes, Maluma is, for, is here. Uh, Jay Barbie. Jay Barbie yeah. is here. Carol G is, of them. is from a town near Medellin. Okay. The name is Santuario. The so you guys have like some good artists coming out and so <laughs> hopefully these guys will be the next on TV. If you can say one thing to people. Oh, you should all come here like there is a lot of places, there is a lot of diversity, people is nice. Um, Medellin is una chimba. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they say. Una chimba. All right. All right, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. All right, thank you. All right, okay. I noticed that Medellin has like serious life. Yeah, that's me. What's up, son? <laughs> okay. Hey, man, I love your dog, man. I saw you walking over there. I said, yo, he's the biggest out of everybody today. What? <laughs> Uh, he's a she is Coco. Okay, she's oh she's a great Dane. Is oh, that yeah, a yeah the great Dane? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get her here? No, I uh I'm actually from a uh, Texas. Texas, okay, yes, you I brought did. her. Uh-huh, look I flew flew on the plane and everything. Oh man. Three this, seats, three seats wide. Look at look at look she's actually <laughs> she's actually getting a lot of attention from people. What do you what do you think about the dog culture here? And um It's awesome man, everyone's friendly and hanging out and you know, that's why I love. I live live over here, so it's just like perfect. Come here on Sundays, they close the street down. It's badass. Yeah, and this really the cool. this the energy of people just running up and down. It's like you have to do that. Yeah. Well, they also just opened up the city and stuff just recently, so now everyone's like so tired of being inside. They want to get out. They want to run, do something. So it's awesome. The weather's so nice, you can't help but go out and run, do something. You know. So nice. This nice. is Coco, and we're. So you, you chose to live in Medellin. There's plenty of other cities that are dope here in Colombia. Uh -huh. Why Medellin? Uh, I'm learning Spanish. Okay. And the accent's a lot, it's very clear mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. uh, and the weather and The city of perfect. Eternal Spring. Perfect, man. It's perfect. Cost of living and stuff. The only thing I miss is Amazon. <laughs> oh yeah? Well, but there's like all these like, up, there's like international shipping charges on yes. top of that. Yeah, and stuff. So some yeah. items are like double the price. So it's crazy, but uh, yeah, no, it's awesome, man. Dude, this is a great city to live in. It's badass. And uh, she is so beautiful. Wow, man. I, wow. The boys get even taller. The boys another couple inches. Get it? She's 135 pounds. The boys get like 150. Wow. Like that. That's insane, man. That's insane. But now it's about, she's usually cuter without her. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That, that's a true essence of dog, man. <laughs> you could tell she's happy just being oh, outside, man. right? You, you could see it in she, her face. She knows Sunday. She knows. Oh, so yeah? Do you feel okay living here? Because, you know, there was all these stereotypes. If you didn't visit here, there was, you know, a lot of people might have thought it might have been a, one of these cities that you got to be cautious about traveling to. That's like my parents thought that, but they don't really know anything. You know, they've never been a lot out of the, out of the country, never really seen anything. So the only thing they know is from movies. So it's like, oh, the only thing they know is, you know, maybe dangerous back in the day, but this is a modern city. It's like I'm taking Ubers places. It's like, it's, it's 2021, you know, everything's modern. It's nice, beautiful. 
Yeah, I think that stair depth's way gone. There's bad areas everywhere. In Dallas, Texas, That's what there's bad areas. I don't go. I would die if I go. <laughs> I just, there's places you just don't go, you know? So you stay out of those areas, don't act like an idiot, and respect people, and don't get drunk and be stupid, and you'll be just fine. All and right. learn some Spanish, yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, you're in their, you're in a whole other country. It's, you respect them, learn their language, you know? All right. Man, thank you, man. Appreciate it, man. All right? And, <laughs> all right, time. man. You enjoy it. All right, peace. Oh. I also do, uh, this is a gallery we have. Okay. See, because it's an amazing place. When is it open? It's a private gallery, so it's usually open like a... Uh, tomorrow? Yeah, 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 it's open tomorrow. And I can, we can film the private yeah, gallery? We can film part of the gallery. Oh, oh, guys, we're going to the gallery. Okay, thank you. Great. I really appreciate it. I'll call you later on today. What's your name? My name is Leon. Perfect, Leon. All right. All right, bye. bye. ¿Qué piensas de Medellín? ¿Es Medellín seguro ahora? Sí, mucho más seguro. Nosotros creo que es relativamente seguro igual. Como todas las ciudades tiene zonas. Hay zonas que son un poco más inseguras que otras. So basically he's been saying what the, the same song everybody's saying. There are areas that are, you know, dangerous, but they, they face the same problems the whole world faces in terms of security. But uh, relatively, this place is a safe place to be. Mucha gente piensa, ah, Medellín es solo droga, solo sexo, pero Medellín es más, ¿verdad? Muchísimo más que eso. Por esa historia que tenemos, nos... Eh, los extranjeros, pues, muchos, mucha parte de los extranjeros vienen enfocados a buscar ese tipo de cosas. Y gracias, pues, incluso a las últimas administraciones y a lo cambio un poquito de conciencia de la ciudadanía, se ha tratado de, de, de quitar ese estigma que tienen de Medellín, pues, como la ciudad insegura, ciudad de narcotraficantes y todo ese tema. Entonces, yo creo que es cuestión de, de, de tiempo para que cambiemos esa imagen que existe. I'm here in downtown area now and I'm just checking out the sights and scenery. Clearly downtown is the area where you're gonna find a lot of cheap things here, guys. It's one of my favorite downtowns in Colombia. I'm so used to walking around this area. Um, a lot of history if you've been watching my channel. And um, it's a cool vibe. Some people can be afraid of this area. I'm not. Uh, you know, you would walk with a purpose, and um, all these people are here for a reason, man. To get the good deal. If it was uh, kind of sketchy or dangerous, they wouldn't be here. They would avoid it. Now, granted, as we've been talking about, there's so many different areas you can go here that will be a little sketchy. Uh, but this area, generally, on this side of town, things are a little bit cool. As you can see, a lot of people are eating and enjoying their time. It's a, it's not a bad situation. But you have people out here are serving, trying to sell you all type of things, okay? So I guess she was trying to sell maybe a tattoo or maybe piercings, <laughs> who knows? If you need a, a great bargain on some counterfeit clothing, this is where you will go. I'm actually in need of a belt, so maybe I'll find a belt and maybe some shoes. I wanna get some new shoes, some black and white shoes. Hola, alguien aquí? <laughs> Sí, yo, yo quiero una muy largo. ¿Y cuánto cuesta en este? Esta es la 25. ¿No? ¿Ah? La 25. ¿25? Oh, 25,000 um, pesos. Déjame pruebalo un momento. Let me see. It fits me right. All right. Okay. I'm on. It is not. Yeah. It doesn't fit. Longer one. So this one, she's charging me twenty-five thousand pesos for. Not a bad deal, but it, uh, it's a little tight. Yes. Got it. Wow. Para tu okay. so I'm twenty-five. I'll pay for it. See. Si. The street has its own symphony to it, its own music. Wow. And that's wow. a part of it right there, that's known. Got me a belt, paid around eight bucks for it. Uh, might be paying way too much, but you know, for me, it's, you know, you know, I'm helping out the economy, either way. And this is Yo? No, no, yo tengo. Everything, everything. 
Yeah, you nice. got the knives over here just in case you, you gotta uh, stay a little ready. ready. Yeah, for... ready. <laughs> Did you eat already? Uh, I think last time I ate was breakfast. Uh, me too. Last thing I ate was breakfast. So I wouldn't mind looking for something to eat here. This, uh, this is actually the tallest building in Medellin, right here. It's like, what is that, a dollar fifty for 30 days of Netflix? This is one of your um, busier um, streets to walk right here. A lot of people come from this angle. It's really a good uh, street to walk down, you know what I mean? It's windy down here. Yeah, uh, I like it. Matter of fact, I have a, my favorite um, Jersey lady. She actually is in that area over there. Hey. ¿Qué tamaño? Nada que cabe a mí. <laughs> Pero es que ya llegaste más llenito. No, no, es el cuarentena. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm actually gonna try some of the food you can find here downtown. It's a pizza spot right here. You got Hawaii, you got all uh, the vegetarian ones, and I'm going for the five cheeses right here. This one looks really good. All right, here we go, guys. This is the five kessels right here. It looks really good. It has some blue cheese in there and um, some American cheese. It looks like there was some. Um, Parmesan cheese up in there. We're gonna try to name a few. Totally worth it. Really good, really good. So good. Si, sí, mucho. ¿Cuál es el mejor? Recomendar la pizza rusa que es la especial de la casa. ¿Es eso? ¿Este? So this is the one that's... Pico azul, cebolla caramelizada, champiñones, tocineta, tomate. So they have uh, mushrooms in there, blue cheese, uh, sauce in there, as you can see. Uh, all pesto, these. rúcula también. Right. So uh, this is like a one that's popular, but she recommends trying that one. So we'll see if we can come back. All right, guys. So we're actually entering Simone Boulevard Park. This is a park where you're gonna find a lot of people just hanging out any time of the day. <laughs> if people ain't have nothing to do, they'll come here. Uh, families might show up hanging out. I've been here several times before. Um, last time I was here two years ago, they had this place um, closed down. I guess they did a, a little bit of renovation here. Uh, another reason why a lot of people like to hang out here is because the city actually provides Wi-Fi for everybody. So it's a, it's a good haven if you're trying to look for work or trying to do some research or you know just trying to connect with people you could come here relax and enjoy that energy that's here So we're actually right in front of the Parque Botero Park right here. This is where you'll find all the statues of Parque Botero, but it's one of the most congested areas in downtown Central Area. One reason is because their metro rail is here. A lot of commerce happens here. There are a lot of uh, free markets here, all right? It can get a little crazy, but we'll, we'll check out some of the crowd here uh, so you can get a cool idea here. I never recommend people watching street for performances here because you 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 leave yourself successful for pickpocketers all right as far as things in my pocket i make sure I, everything's in front of my pocket <laughs> in my pocket and uh i'm always paying attention plus i got my boy here you know what i mean so he's watching my back but if he wasn't here i'd still be fully comfortable being in this area um, I just have to move a little bit differently. So you do the same. You should be fine. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the flyest vlogger of them all? I'm back. <laughs> so guys, we're back at um, Parque Fernando Bortero. I think it's called Parque Bortero. And as you can see, there's a bunch of people here um, just enjoying your time. This is where you're going to find a lot of tourists. Um, some who are Colombian, but they um, live in different parts of the, um, the country. And um, you're gonna find a lot of locals here. You're gonna find a lot of hustlers here. Uh, but for the most part, this part, there's a lot of... Welcome, my friend. What's going on? For the most part, there's a lot of uh, security here to make you feel safe. 
as you can see, you have all type of street performers here. Then you have your street vendors here um, trying to uh, make a quick butt. And you got some a guy right here, like a statue here. Yeah, it's everybody's trying to hustle here. But I, I will say this. I have come here before and I, I did take advantage of buying one of those statues. So it might be a cool place to uh, get a uh, souvenir here. It's getting kind of dark over here. Do you feel kind of safe here or? I mean, it ain't the safest place, but it's <laughs> What could you recommend somebody doing um, to prevent not getting um, assaulted or robbed or just stay aware? You know, don't be, don't let people linger towards you. Stay away from you know areas that you know are just bad situations. Like you don't want to go walking into a a group of dudes. You know what I mean? <laughs> try to stay, try to stay in a, at least two man pairs. Like well, a, say if you have to travel and you're by yourself. Okay. Well, probably don't want to come down here when it get dark. That's one. <laughs> Why would you be down here if it's dark? I don't know. Maybe you're looking for trouble. Probably, yeah. Maybe you're adventurous or you're a risk taker. Maybe or... you're like a bear. You're looking for honey. <laughs> you tell me. Is that down here? <laughs> by getting in trouble looking for honey. All right. I've gotten lost coming out here refusing to look at the map because <laughs> there's so many areas you can find yourself in it can get really confusing go uh, walking down these streets it's, it's uh five o'clock and this place is getting even more congested uh the reason why is because a lot of people are leaving work <laughs> and so a lot of people come to this area there's a lot of different bus stations you can catch in this area and then a lot of people want to get the last minute shopping and you know there's a lot more women in medellin so <laughs> Women like to shop, needless to say. All right, I'm back over here on this trip because I want to get another one of those five castles. What's going on, my brother? Uh, hey, man, shout out to you. Uh, te lo dije. <laughs> this is your name of your band right here, right? Yeah, that's right. Man, uh, I got to give it up to you. You guys are very talented guys, you know what I mean? Hey, man. And how Thank long you. you been playing the drums? It's like a drum, but this is no, it's, it's a drum set. It's like a, a drum box. It's like a drum box. Okay. Uh, my bus, I see you play with your hands, man. How long you been doing this? Uh, <laughs> you ever seen people play with their hands? Well, my English is not very good, but I try. Okay, so you guys are you're, you, not you're from Venezuela. <laughs> yeah. Venezuela. I'm from Caracas, yeah. Okay. Um, how you feel about now that they're letting um over I think over one million what is it one point four million people get le legal status here for ten years? It's like. A, is it good or bad? I don't know. Well, it's a pen. It depends. Yeah, you see. To get your ID, at least yeah, to be official. It's, it's like ID for 10 years. Could, can you catch the bus now and go on plane? Yeah, I think, I think so. Okay. What do you think about Medellin? Is it a good city? Is it the best city? Uh, Is it the best city? Uh, Caracas. <laughs> well, uh, Colombia. Which we talk about Colombia. Caracas and Venezuela. Medellin city is for me is yeah. it's the best city because the the weather is wow. The weather is good. Oh, very good, man. It's like a Caracas. It's, it's, it's like the same. Okay, but what about here? You're working downtown Medellin. Is it peligroso or seguro? Oh, it's mucho depend. gente viene aquí. No, no, it's depend. Oh. Mm -hmm. Can I say in Spanish? Con tu tamaño no es peligroso. You said, oh, you said with me, with how I am, it's not gonna be scary. You know what I mean? Por qué gente viene aquí? Why people come over here? In Spanish. Eh, este es una, este es una zona muy concurrida, una zona, una zona muy turística. La, este es el famoso pasaje Junín. Es donde la gente transita. Hay muchos comercios que tienen muchísimos años acá en Medellín. De los primeros comercios que se formaron es lo que tengo entendido, ¿no? Lo que lo poco que sé de esta ciudad. Y allá es una zona empresarial también. Okay. Allá hay bancos también, hay muchos negocios, aseguradoras. Entonces la gente se transita muchísimo es una por aquí. Zona muy comercial y a la vez muy turística y a la vez muy vieja. O sea, no es, no... Uh, okay, so basically saying it's a tourist location but it also serves the community big time they got banks here you can get some good clothing here it's yeah. one of the oldest um, places to shop in Medellin so I think that's one of the reasons all right thank you brothers hey, I, re hey. I really appreciate it man keep on rocking man all right yeah, yeah, yeah. you guys are very talented all right all right, all right. All right. Yeah. Best, best, best. I'm here at the AH art gallery uh, remember I met a woman that was just showing me some vegetables and um, she ended up 
invited me to her gallery here. This gallery is in between the Parque Poblado area and the train station. This is a famous 10th Street right here. So you can actually walk to the Metro Rail right here, like right in between. I used to pass this place all the time. So I'm looking forward to seeing this gallery. So let's go check it out. All right. And I think I pressed it. I want to learn more about the artists from this country and from this city. Maybe we can learn more about what Medellin is by looking at the art. Hello. Oh, it's loud outside. It oh. is loud. Okay. Welcome. All right. Okay, so this is an art gallery in Medellin. Mm -hmm. We have all sorts of artists here, most of them from Colombia, but we also have some amazing artists from Latin America. Today we're going to show you very fast some of the artists from Medellin. That's like the point of this documentary. Okay. I'd like to tell you very fast, this is an old house from Medellin, a very typical house. What they used to do in architecture back then was these very long houses that they would have like a long uh, corridor with the rooms on the right hand side and then it would end up in a very big garden so like all these houses together would create like a small garden in the center of the blocks uh, having like a natural lawn for the city when do you know when this um house was built or this building this house was built, well, we think this house is a uh, very old, mainly because apparently Medellin was born in Plaza um, del Poblado. So this is, house is very near to Plaza del Poblado. So we have an idea that this house can be like very, very old. We don't know for sure when it was built, but uh, because of the architecture that I'm telling you about, it makes sense that it's gonna be that old. Nice. Okay. Okay. This is beautiful, by the way. I just love the way everything's set up. You know why? Because I, when you're outside, <laughs> I you don't imagine seeing this. Yeah. And then you come in here and it's everything's open space. It felt kind of crap outside, that I, but here it's like, huge so go ahead tell me what you got yeah and also you're gonna notice that there's no not much sound and the further we go in the less sound you're gonna hear because calle 10 is one of the most like yeah, it's populated. Loud outside. yeah it's it's a big difference okay let me start by um showing you this which is like one of our artists um he's an he's from an indigenous community uh, in the south uh, not the, in southeast of colombia uh, his name is carlos hakana mihoy and what he does with his paintings is he tries to, he tries to show us um, the things that he sees during his rituals. Um, they have uh, these rituals with ayahuasca in his, uh, in his um What is ayahuasca? What is that? Oh, that's so, the home ayahuasca mm -hmm. is a plant. It's like a plant that is used by many indigenous communities around the world. Well, mainly in America, actually, because I think it's endemic from America. And uh, what they do is they transcend uh, by drinking this plant um, and they get to see like all these uh, different uh, universes. Um, it's like a therapy because through this plant, they like um, find some answers for things they've been searching for. And it's the way the old eldest teach the young. So it has a very important like impact. This is awesome. So, yeah. So and this is something what he sees? Yeah, these are some of the images he sees when he's doing these rituals with his community. And mm. it's like very colorful, as you can see. He's very famous here. He's been, I mean, he's part of some of the greatest collections. I think he's part of the Smithsonian Museum. He's been to China. Nice. He's part of the Tate, I think, as well. I mean, I'm not very like 100% sure of the, um, of the collections that he's in, but I can tell you that as soon as we're done with the tour. Sorry, Catholic influences. Well, yeah, actually this wall is some of our older uh, artists, like let's say old masters, but like Colombian, which are very influenced by Europeans, obviously. And as you know, back then it was very much like religious types of art. Um, when you say master Spaniard, are you talking about Spaniard? Uh, I'm talking, I mean, these, these are artists from the beginning of the 20th century in mm. Colombia and they usually came from Europe, like they went to study abroad and came back with all these techniques and with all this knowledge. 
So we have things that are obviously very much influenced by, by what was going on there. Nice. And as you know, back like a long time ago, religion was one of the main uh, topics in art. It was like religion, landscapes, and uh, something else. And uh, it, 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 it gradually turned into different topics, different uh, techniques. That's what makes contemporary art like different. And so here we still have some of these very religious uh, images. Uh, although this, for example, is from a very contemporary artist that we, well, his name is uh, Juan Camilo Uribe. And he's like, this is more contemporary. This is like an appropriation of these religious works but from a different perspective, like from contemporary art, because you can see it has different techniques and it's like repeating Jesus and all this. It's very, so it's very different than one of these mm. representations, obviously, which is much more. <laughs> this will actually remind me of an album I seen from Drake album. Oh, interesting. Yeah, That's I know interesting. what you're talking about. Makes sense, actually. This is Luis Fernando Peláez. Uh -huh. This is one of our most important artists in Medellín. Um, he did this, um, it's called uh, La Plaza de las Luces. It's a very famous spot in Medellin. It's a big uh, plaza with uh, like some tubes that go up and they have lights and they have like different sizes. Um, he did that work, uh, artwork with his son, who's a big architect in Medellin as well. So he's like one of our icons. Um, the other very important artist from Medellin it's called, he's called Hugo Zapata. Mm -hmm. He works with this type of uh, stones. This is volcanic stone. Oh. Yeah, these are volcanic stones called uh, uh, Lutita in Spanish. What he, the reason why, he, he used to work with stones since the beginning. He has some amazing sculptures in marble. If you go to Universidad Eafit, there's like a big sculpture of his in marble, and made like well. Where's that university white. located? It's very near. It's in Las Vegas. Okay. Uh, like very near to this, to here. In the city. In the city, yeah. There he has an amazing sculpture. It's not marble actually. It's like a white stone. But where I don't does, remember. Where does he get his uh, his stones from? Okay, so he, these stones that are now like the main material that he uses. He came across them one day. He was walking. One of these stones broke, and he realized that the that the, the, the like the tainted outside is different to the to the to the color inside. Mm -hmm. So you see. So this is the color inside. This is the color outside. Mm -hmm. So he realized he could play with this, and since then this became like his main uh, his main uh, tool, let's say, or primary his source. Story. And these are only found in very specific places where there used to be an ocean or a source of water before, and it's very difficult to find them. He says that they they are a, ¿cómo se dice? cosecha cuando tú cosechas algo. You don't know? No. Like when you grow crops. Okay. What the, what's the name of that uh, moment? Uh, harvest. Okay. So he says he harvests them because they fall like from the top of the mountain at certain nice. points, and then he has to find a trolley to bring them trolley like a crate crane. Mm -hmm. to bring them out of there. It's like a huge is that, work. Is that in Colombia or different? In Colombia, everything in Colombia. And there are huge pieces of stone mm -hmm. that you have to carve and make into different things. But so he, yeah, when he finds them, it's like a big job to get them somewhere else. Nice. You can see some big ones here, for example. This is him. This is him as well. And these, these are like the Twin Towers. Okay. These are actually mine, but... <laughs> you like to put them there? Yeah. So, like, uh, everything here is for sale, pretty much? Everything here is for sale. Okay. Um, this is him as well. Okay. okay. Let's continue with another artist from Medellin. Okay. His name is Alejandro Tabón. Okay. He works with memory. So as you can see, this, all these pieces of wood come from different places. Wow. You see? Wow, I didn't, like, you know, this is nice. Check this out. So this, this all used to be a part of something, um, a chair, a table, um, a closet. These are very like famous closets from here that used to be huge and very like bulky. 
And so he takes all these pieces of wood and he turns it into these new objects, which are obviously like very contemporary artworks. Uh, he has these spheres that are he's very famous for, but he also do, does this, which is amazing. So we have in Colombia, we have a type of bird that uh, makes this nest. This is the nest of a bird called gulungo. So the, the way it works is the bird takes a long time making the nest and then he just waits for a female, well for a, for a girl, for a female bird to come, to, to come and choose his, his, his nest. creation. Yeah, and then the, 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 the bird is gonna, the female bird is gonna choose a creation based on how good the architecture of the nest is. So Alejandro does this as well with pieces of uh, wood that you can see are also from other uh, spots and places. Just to finish is Jason Sierra, another one of the artists we represent, an amazing artist from Medellin. He works the topic of um, mining. He comes from a very like a minor yeah, community. So obviously all his family has been uh, into mining and he grew up into this world, but he's been very um, critic of it and he tries to express some of this criticism through his artworks. So what he does is he paints these which are like landscapes of gold and silver is the way they're called. And what he tries to show is like what we're, like what we're having, all this gold is under the mountain, but the landscapes are turning so gray because we're just like De wow. devastating everything in order to get that go the gold out. He has another series that is more on a gold uh, palette. So he's also like um, trying to to yeah to question this. You can see the last here. You see, so these are like very gray landscapes that have these very small. Um, lakes and rivers of gold that are being lost. Let me show you the other room, the other exhibition room. Okay. Well, this is like a house. Yeah, the, you know, it's so you have like a kitchen and then <laughs> you have like a pulley. We didn't uh, show them pulley. Pulley is our assistant. Hola, como estas? <laughs> yeah, so is, yeah, this is like a... It's a... You know, I love how this house is has tall ceilings. Yeah. Huge. I'm telling you, you, when you're outside, you don't expect to walk into this. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's like Medellin, like you expect something else, but then you get here uh -huh. and you realize that things are not the way you think they are. Uh -huh. Nice. Okay. Um, yeah, this, well, this, just to show you, like these are some of the parts of the house. This is crazy full of things that you can see. Um, this is another uh, exhibition room we have. One of the things that we take like great pride is that you, when you come to visit this gallery, this is an experience. Like we like to, to mix art with experiences and to make people fall in love with art. So for that reason, this garden is very helpful because people come here and they also get to see like some of the typical uh, plants from here we have. We have a lot of here, which has sadly disappeared, but it will come back. It comes back every now and then. And what we do here, well, my father, he's a botanic lover, like a garden maker. <laughs> so all of the things you see here have been grown here. And we try to have like a little bit of everything. And we have amazing birds. I met you at, uh, at the food market. Um, Look at her. She's a... Whoa. She's like, she comes to visit often, so, but she's not supposed to do that because she's damaging the, so I'm gonna scream at her, sorry for that. <laughs> hey, no hagas eso, ven para acá. Tú no te puedes comer eso, no, no, ven. No, señora. Because she damages the <laughs> newly born uh, leaves, 
So we're fighting with her, but she's she's like from home. We always leave her some uh, uh -huh. nuts. So she coming. has her food here. She doesn't need to go there. She loves Oiga. She doesn't need to go there, and she also has a nest uh, there oh, okay. with some babies. Oh, okay. But they love, like, they have huge teeth that grow very fast, so they need to be, like, biting Chewing things. Something. And so she's not allowing these trees to grow because she'll start, if you stand up here, you can see, she'll start attacking, like, oh, the base wow. of, the, of the... So then that is not going to grow, and she loves it. So we're <laughs> fighting with her every day. Niña, tú no te puedes comer eso. Yo te he dicho que tú no te puedes comer eso. Tú no me haces caso. ¿Por qué haces eso? Ven, ven acá. She knows you. She yeah, comes. Yeah, she in. knows me because she comes every day. But she's 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 stressed because I didn't let her eat the. So now she's like, she's not coming to us now. <laughs> um, I want to show you this, which is a very Whoa. nice place that you're going to meet. This is the library. As I was telling you before, we try to make people have like an experience when they, when they come to see art in this gallery. And part of that experience includes having a lot of books so you can show them not only the piece that they're looking at, but other works from that artist and, and other artists that came before. This is the... Welcome. Wow. It's also my father's office, um, but it has like an amazing... I would have never expected this. <laughs> oh man. So this, this, all, this whole area is just art, basically. Botero, whom you know, yeah. Botero is like... Wow. Like Fernando Botero, yeah. the, the sculpturist. The sculpturist that you've seen in the Plaza Botero. Uh, well, just Botero is like... You have so many books about him. It's from here to here. This is just Botero, all of this. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, but you have everything. You have, obviously, Picasso, Dada... And your family and actually grew up... You grew up with your family into art. Yeah, I grew up into art. And my, my father's... My parents' friends are all artists since I was born. Look, she's eating, now she's eating what she's supposed to eat. Um, so my father's uh, friends are all artists and we've been growing up in the art world in general. How, how can you uh, describe, I know you mentioned you were in Bogota for a while, mm -hmm. but how could you describe the art scene here in Medellin and what are you, you know, like you mentioned, you showed me an indigenous um, yes. painting and then you, there was one where the guy was showing you the differences of like, what what gold mining can do to the landscape so i think a lot of people like to use art to address social issues totally yeah uh -huh. which is a nice thing actually art i feel art is like a language is like a tool that you use to communicate something and um, in this case uh, i mean it usually has a lot to do with uh, society issues with political uh, topics things that the like you want to make a claim let's say um this happens often but there's also space for just love or admiration for nature and stuff like this um i think the, the difference between medellin and bogota is big i mean bogota is a much bigger city with um, more m money we could say maybe um but but because it's more cosmopolitan it's more uh, like people are much more into collecting into buying artworks that are expensive um medellin is different in that sense because we have a growing community of collectors but it's not as big as bogota yet and also there's like an idea that you don't spend that much in art and you know art is it's art is expensive because like we saw before this guy that makes the hyper realistic paintings he takes one month painting this so it takes like a lot of effort and it's expensive so medellin doesn't have this idea of the expense of art so clear yet like i think it's growing and it's becoming stronger but for sure bogota has like a bigger market in that sense uh medellin has a uh, quality though and it's got amazing artists like the the number of great artists in medellin is like very big so it's like a artist hop in colombia definitely for sure
but obviously in terms of market well it's got some differences with Bogota yeah I wanted to show you this because you were mentioning the the artist the indigenous artist so I said made some of the this is like a this he this painted a this bridge. yeah but this is made by Asep which is like a, a, a brand from Colombia mm -hmm. and so this was made uh, on, on his I mean inspired by this artist oh this was inspired by him by Carlos Acanamijo nice okay and yeah it could take ages like showing you thousands of artists that no this is a this is a this is interesting to see. I mean, it gives you a good idea of what people are, what's important for people, you know what I mean? So, yeah. and um, here you get to have like a, a look at many different styles of art, mm -hmm. and types of artists in Colombia, which is interesting, definitely. There is a community here for artists and um, people and art lovers here, right? For sure. So, is yeah. there like a special time where all you guys meet up in here, here in Medellin? Well, Actually, we here as in the gallery, we do that uh, effort often. And what we do is gather people, like sometimes we do reunions with artists, so we'll have like a great Sancocho and all of them come together. Other times we do it, for example, with the, with people from the art world, like uh, some of the directors of the museums, some other galleries, so we'll just gather and talk about certain topics uh, there's other sit moments where we just do it with clients so what we try to do here is have like very private reunions but where we can set the the tone for like talking about art and reflecting on this um, that like as a gallery but as a as a city Medellin offers a lot of cultural things like art in Medellin is moving a lot and they're trying to make it like move every time more um, we have two moments in the year where art is like pretty strong. The first one and most important one is around October when we have Art Bow Fair. It's like the most important fair in Colombia and it's like the time where we have all these collectors coming from abroad in order to see some of our artists and where we have like a big movement in art in the year. And then there's another time which is like a less... Uh, important but it's still gaining momentum it's at the beginning of the year around may and um, we have art bow weekend so it's like the art bow fair from at the end of the year they make like a small weekend and this is in order for people to be like paying attention to art yeah also we it manages to bring collectors and obviously art uh, is a market it's a global market by now and we obviously aspire our, our, our artists to enter this global market. So uh, the more collectors we have from abroad, the more public we're able to give to our artists, which is great. But it also works against us. Like I was telling you before, making art very expensive because once you enter like an international market and you have such a weak peso, um, everything becomes really expensive. So it's like a fight between not letting the prices go up, but wanting to get them out into that market, which is bigger, and it will mean the artist is gonna gain more money. It's like a- It would have helped the artist out. It would, but, but then, then he's gonna lose some clients as well here. Your so, local clients. Yeah, so it can come hard for him as well in terms of sale, sales, 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 sales. So anyway, what I was wanted to, to, to say also is I think it's great that we have this art fair. I think it's great that we are doing this effort, but I think it's sad that at the end of the day, everything uh, comes together in that particular moment of the year. I wish we had more of these events throughout the year in order to keep art like an important thing constantly because art is like one of the most important things we have uh, to come out of like for resilience or for like uh, therapy for quality of life so i wish we gave to more leave importance. a statement yeah to leave a statement for example it's like a primary source of history you know so i wish we had more moments throughout the year where art was really important but i'm glad we have this as well like at least you know and um, let's go to the second 
I'm gonna bring this and we're gonna give some to the... <laughs> yeah. To our cheap and dates. Okay. Another part of the gallery where we have some... Eso está muy bien. Eso es lo que tienes que comer. Now she's eating the proper food. Oh, okay. So this is another exhibition. Okay. Another part of the exhibition. Um, this is Ana Mercedes Hoyos. She's one of our most amazing artists. Um, a woman, she's the first to bring like all this. This is Palenque San Basilio. So, oh. Have you heard about San Basilio de Palenque? Yeah, I've been there. You've been there? Okay, amazing. <laughs> I've never been. I wish I had. Uh, I've tried to, but I haven't. Uh, so, yeah, Palenque San Basilio is like the first free Palenque in Colombia. It's like where many and slaves... And this were. artist came from there or they just No, actually a... she had a lot of good friends from there. She was working a lot in Cartagena. She had an apartment there and she get, got in touch with these women. She was fascinated by these women that go on the beach because they have these huge things on their head with the fruits and an amazing sense of like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so she was very impressed by them and she started making like friends and she became very close to them and so she devoted most of her art to these women and to bring them into the houses of, you know, high class Bogota uh, people. So it also created like a bridge between two cultures that were so separated, became like uh, bound by beauty in a way mm -hmm. so this um each of these sculptures has a name it's like a, a, a sculpture based on a person on a real person one of her friends close friends from san basilio de palenque and at the end of her career because she sadly passed away a few years back but at the end of her career she devoted a lot to this which was like the bows of the traditional dress of this wow woman. yeah, yeah. I These see are the bones that you have here, you see? So she was very interested by that because it's amazing. They have amazing like this, you can see, you know, it's like amazing styles that are worth like mm -hmm. looking into, you know. And then I see uh, this painting right here from that same Jason, gentleman. Exactly, from that same gentleman, Jason Sierra. This is very nice because this is actually a inspired by one of the most amazing spots that we have in Colombia which is called Parque Chiribiquete have you heard about this? no so Chiribiquete is an amazing place that they found not long ago I mean it's been there forever but it was a little bit hidden because of armed conflict and a few years back uh, Carlos Castaño who used to be the um, minister of uh, of well nature i don't remember the name right now he had to stop there by mistake and he realized this amazing place that has this has like huge walls with uh, with paintings that keeps keeps become like there's even new paintings all the time but they don't know how they make them because you have to go down from very high altitudes like holding uh, ho uh, so if you go there you'll see paintings yes and who's who's the, who's painting them so the fact that there's new paintings and they don't know really where it's coming from it's obviously ma uh, made by um, communities just... that haven't been contacted are you serious yeah and the fact that they make these paintings is the most amazing thing because they have to these are huge walls, so in order to paint on them, you have to like do rappel, basically, and paint. And they always wonder how they make it because it's really so. Difficult. Has anybody look into it? Chiribiquete, it's very important. Has anybody ever got in contact with the people? The thing is, or you don't uh, want to? Lately, not right now. Lately, it's very famous and people now hear about it and now know about it and everyone wants to go even me I would love to go so the government has been trying to keep it safe First of all from tourism because they don't want it to become like a bad tourism for the place mm. Second can you can you hear that? Yeah, that's her <laughs> eating second because um, They're doing this thing where they grow the agricultural frontier what they do is they burn, mm. so it's like apparently uh, 
fire, but once everything is burnt, it's like agricultural uh, land and soil. And this is going on right now, and it's very sad and it's very scary, is the fact that they found this place and they've been trying to keep it safe because that's the thing. Armed conflict, which was horrible for our country, has been pretty okay in keeping nature safe, sadly. Now that this is like gone because of the peace treaty, etc., because it was mainly the FARC that were keeping a lot of these places um, protected. So now that this is gone, like there's a lot of places that are gonna be um, vulnerable. This is one of them. And I, as, as I'm telling you, in, right now, as we speak, they're taking territories and territories of a place that is like virgin and it's one of the most amazing and places. Did, well, the FARC, when you say the FARC was keeping it safe, they weren't inadvertently, it's just they were there, so that's why they were safe, or the FARC literally kept it safe. I mean, there's stories, I, for example, I was doing a lot of documentaries mm. on, the, on, the, on, on the forest and different places, jungle, etc. And there's many places where there was an intention to keep things safe. Oh, gotcha. And obviously it was really bloody. It was like if they caught you killing an endangered species, they would like hang you or yeah, something, yeah, like yeah. really horrible. So people were very scared. So it was safety, but through, you know, through like coercion, I don't know. And this is Carlos Salas. This is an artist from Bogota, well, from Pitalito, Willa, actually. And he is one of our most important abstract artists. We were in Miami, in the, in Art Basel, in the North Miami Museum with an amazing exhibition. Then he went to White Box in New York and we were chosen as one of the 10 best exhibitions during Freeze Art. Really? And now we're going to China. Um, well, he's going to be in London, actually, in a solo show in Saatchi very soon. And he's going to China as well for a big exhibition. It's going to be amazing. This is Nain Ospina. This is also one of our very well-known artists. He works these topics where he takes uh, the things that are like our, st our history, you know? Uh, like the prey. This, this is very Mayan. This is the jugador de pelota. It's like the the player of ball. And so this is a, an old uh, sports from Mayan uh, culture where they would have to put this ball through a very small hole and whoever won... Took and pick, took and pick or something. Yeah, it's something like this. And whoever won was sacrificed. So the gods and like with all these bloody mm -hmm. things that they have going on. So what he does is take these very important things of our history and our backgrounds, our culture, and he mixes it with Mickey Mouse. So it's obviously like a criticism because what he says is, I bet you if I put a Mickey Mouse head on that, then people are gonna pay attention to this. And it happens. It's the same as this. This is from the South. I don't know if you've been to this park. It's called the, um, it's in the South of Colombia where they have these huge sculptures in, in this kind of uh, uh, stone. I don't remember the name right now. So what he does is the same. He takes exactly the same sculpture, but, he puts um, Mickey Mouse, Mouse on it, and then people are going nuts. This with uh, the lights, or even there, yeah. and then it will give a, a nice. We have our boats, like a whole uh, cascade. Cascade. Yeah. It's a waterfall. Yeah, it's a waterfall. How much is your artwork here, and do you guys um, deliver? Can you set up the? Yeah, we can. Del we deliver all around the world. We were actually, we did a few. Like we did a lot of sales last year, mm -hmm. apart from the pandemic, and we were sending artworks to Australia, to Canada, to Europe, many places. Uh, we have a big range because we work with very well-known artists like Botero, that ha can be really expensive. I mean, a huge sculpture of Botero, like, like the ones you see in the Plaza Botero, can be worth around, I don't know, five million dollars i mean it's really expensive obviously the pieces that we work with are less expensive but are still very expensive but then we also have some of the younger artists so those can range between three hundred dollars and ten thousand dollars let's say so you have like a whole variety of, of artists if you're fully confident someone might purchase some art here and it the value will go up 
Yeah, that's what we usually do is we work with artists that we that we believe in, that we know are serious people that are going to be striving in their work. So usually what you get when you see an artist that obviously has a talent and that is serious with his work is that he's going to keep like working. <laughs> so he's going to be better every time. It's a little bit like you. Yeah. And you're going to make more money every time and you're going to be even better at what mm -hmm. you do. So what we try to do is find those artists in which we believe. So yeah, hopefully like anything you buy here is going to be a more expensive unless something dramatic happens but that's usually the case we've seen a lot of artwork here and you know you are very interested in art but do you have art do you create yeah well i do create as well like my father he's an artist he keeps like uh, things for the artworks that he's gonna make later in his life me, on the other hand, I'm a documentarist and I work with, um, I, I do a lot of filming and a lot of... Get pictures. out of here! Get, she never told me this! <laughs> you, are you, now you're telling me this! <laughs> yeah. You're serious! Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I met you and I mentioned that to you, but you never told me you were as I well. Know, I know. And I was really happy to meet you because of that reason. That's why I gave you my card and I was like, come, because I know if I was you, I would be so happy mm. to be able to show these weird places where no one gets to go because mm. it's very, like, private. And so, yeah, I've worked in documentaries most of my life, actually. I did, like, many social documentaries, mm. mainly. Uh, so that's, like, my artistic side. But obviously I'm very much into sales nowadays. Mm. Like I sell art and that's the thing that's very important. Like art is amazing. Art is something that we all have access without paying, which is amazing in Wikipedia or in Google, everything. We can access images. This is a luxury that we didn't used to have. But we have to keep in mind that art is also an asset and it's something that makes part of a market. And there's artists that need to live from this. So I guess like that's one of our approaches that makes a difference perhaps is that we know we're in the art world and we try to keep it as academic as we can but we also know we have to make money for these artists and that's what like we really are like putting an effort into and we managed to do it pretty well like there's a lot of artists that we managed to work with and so that's important as well. Let me ask you a question. What's that tree right there? Oh, this is a very interesting tree. That's the tree where the nuts that we give the squirrel are born. This, which we call poroso, mm. I don't know, I don't know, like, what might be another name. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can see them. Yeah, these are, okay. Like the classic Chippendale, well, these are more rounded, but it's like a type of nut. Mm -hmm. So this grows in that tree. That tree is called poroso tree. So what's amazing is that the squirrels will go up. Like the squirrels will climb through all of these spikes. They will climb this? Yeah. I thought this was like, they put this here so you can't even get in there. It's, it looks well, difficult to climb. I guess the tree is doing its best. <laughs> it's doing its best in order to keep squirrels afar, but it's not managing because they will just climb through that. Maybe you can look from here to the top and then they'll just climb to get some of these from the top so you can see squirrels most of the time in some of these um so what we do is sometimes we put some like other plants on top that they will just <laughs> still to climb and get their and own climb food. yeah all right <laughs> yeah but this is a beautiful beautiful tree actually nice and it took long to grow like this height Okay, uh, so the name of our gallery is AH Fine Art. You can find us in the web. It's www.ahfineart.com. All right, guys. So what I'll do is I'll put their information in the description. And that way, if you want to come here, get a tour, or per perhaps are interested sure. in purchasing one of the pieces that we've seen here, or if you want to feed the squirrel, <laughs> <laughs> I will put all that information in the description. So most definitely check them out, especially if you're going to be visiting Medellin, because you're we're this is Poblado, right? Is this yeah. so? A lot of people, a lot of tourists stay here, and they they're always going to go to that Metro Rail. There's a Metro Rail around yeah. the corner, exactly. so on your way to the Metro Rail, you can stop here. All right, it won't it won't be an inconvenience. You can walk in, you stop, let's go here, and then, oh, Metro Rail. <laughs> okay, cool. We'll wait for you then. All right, cool. <laughs> After learning so much about Colombia's art culture, I wanted to see more. So I took a trip out of town to Guatapé to visit my friend Binky, who runs a bed and breakfast. He agreed that he would take me on the boat. 
so I could see a relic from old. Where he had a security. Okay, I see like a, a green building over there. Is yeah. that what you're talking so about? Of course, yeah. Uh, it, they, they call it the glass house. That's where the security was, armed and dangerous. Obviously, you know that, baby. Um, and it's a trip because they had radios. So when you had the federalities, the police come in, all, FBI from USA come in, uh, helicopters, they would literally like notify him with radios. And it's, it's about, I, I would say, honey, how many meters uh, from here to, uh, to the house? Mm, 300, maybe look, you can. Yeah, 300, me 300 meters to Pablo. So, his, that was the glass house. I see yeah. some people his there. His security. Uh -huh. the his three, security. 360 view. And then. Uh, and at the end. <laughs> at the end. You can see the white house where we're going. And they would call, in, you know, they will call him so he can, you know, obviously escape and get away. But a lot of people don't, you know, push that, you know. And he used it's, to have submarines. Oh my submarines God. Here. So in oh. this, in this lagoon here. So there was yeah. a lagoon at the time. Cause I know that before yeah, they had, it's a city here, here. Yeah, it was a lake in that moment already. Yeah. Is that his home? Yeah, that's right there, baby. Looks blown up! Actually, yeah, all his home. What happened to his home? Did it close it? Everyone thinks it's the, the police. Uh, the police blew it up all his estates and homes, but no. And the police cartel. Yeah, it was the cartel. It was the cartel. His enemies. The Pepe. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. I heard about the Pepe. Honey, honey. Hola, Ace, ¿cómo estás? Estoy aquí en Medellín. Today I'm going to try to talk to you about a topic that people in Medellín and myself we don't like to talk about because it's disgusting. It's about the narco terrorists and about the mafia people and about the Cali cartel, the Medellin cartel and Pablo Escobar. A lot of people come to the to the city and they're gonna go they want to visit or try to do a tour to visit those places where Pablo lives, where he was killed, etc. etc. For us as Paisas, we don't like to talk about, we hate to talk about, and today, finally, it's going to happen something nice. I'm going to tell you about that. I went to El Poblado today, to the Edificio Monaco, the Monaco building that used to be owned by Pablo Escobar and his family. In 1988, that particular building was uh, almost destroyed by a bomb that it was planted by the Pepes, the hitman from the Cali cartel. At that particular time, the Cali cartel, no, I'm sorry, the Medellin cartel hated by Pablo Escobar was in a war against the Cali cartel and the Colombian government. So in, 19, in January in 1988, the Cali cartel planted a car bomb in front of the Monaco building in El Poblado with 88 kilograms of dynamite. Uh, this building was uh, heavy duty, very well, uh, very well constructed and very strong and survived the terrorist attack. It was only damaged to the windows and glasses of the building. So now the Mayor, the mayor of the city and the city in general decided to demolish the building. So tomorrow they're going to plant particular different kind of uh, explosive devices on the building to bring the building down. So today I went to the building to take some pictures and to take some films and tomorrow I'm planning to go there to see the demolition of the building by the explosives and we are very happy about that we are glad uh, about that and 
when they destroyed the building, the mayor and the city, they are planning to construct a memorial and a little park. Uh, it's good to remember that during the war with the Colombian government and the city, the Medellin cartel headed by Pablo Escobar killed 46,612 people. Um, 614 police officers were killed in that war. So now you understand why we don't want to talk about it's part of the past. Medellin is in a transformation. We are heading in a different direction and we don't want to talk about mafia and things like that. You are welcome to use the videos that I'm going to send you. Some are uh, with voice over and some are with no voice so you decide whatever you want to take and post it in your youtube channel and tomorrow i'm planning to go to the campestre club in front of the monaco building to see you know when the building is going to come down after the, the explosive device are detonated I wonder if she's married. Is she thinking of me? She has a mirror in her hand. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the flyest vlogger of them all? <laughs> all right.